You know, knife nuts, there was a time in the history of manliness where we weren't concerned with whether a pocket clip had good retention or whether the surface of the G10 shredded your pocket. There was a time when men who were men carried cool knives in leather sheaths on their belts. They were a statement, a symbol of virility and status, depending on what was inside them. And we're going to take a look at one of those things inside them tonight. Stay with me, guys. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 21 November 2013, and yes, uh, tonight we're going to take a look at what's inside this particular leather sheath. This is a nice uh, sort of natural leather colored basket weave sheath that I purchased at a gun and knife show just about exactly 20 years ago. It came unfinished, and over the years it has sort of been aged and polished by fabric and it just has a nice sort of golden color and uh, well I bought it separate from what's inside it and what's inside it is kind of cool and I actually wore and carried this knife today and I thought you all would like to see it before it uh, gets tucked back into the safe and it's a knife with a pretty cool story <clears throat> so here it is I believe it was about 1993. I was at a gun and knife show at the Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And a knife purveyor had some stag handled nickel silver bolstered Damascus bladed beauties from Jacksonville, Alabama on his table. This two-bladed trapper caught my eye. Isn't it pretty? And this knife next to the others on his table was the product of a pretty short-lived joint venture between the legendary knife designer, maker, and purveyor Jim Parker and a local Alabama fella from Jacksonville named Fane Edwards, who was a pretty proud and pretty skilled forger of Damascus steel. Uh, it sort of upset Fane and his family, steel makers that they were, that Damascus production in the 1980s had disappeared from the United States. And he started a started a business and a factory, making this uh, making this knife steel, 512 layers of heat forged, forge welded Damascus steel, and his recipe is a little non-standard. Some guys really like it. Some guys think it's impossible to make a knife blade out of it. I kind of like it. But it's 512 layers of 5160 spring steel. Yeah, that's what they make leaf springs out of for cars. And 1018. A little bit different, uh, a little bit different recipe than we're used to seeing, isn't it? A lot of Damascus that's made nowadays is like uh, L6 tool steel and 15N26. Uh, of course, the L6 being the hard steel, and then the 15N26 is just a, a sulfurized plain carbon steel with a little nickel added. Uh, the 5160 is a lot lower carbon than L6, and 1018 doesn't really have the workability that 15N26 has, but the mix seems to work pretty well. And it does make for a cool finish, doesn't it? 
Takes a pretty sweet polished edge too, doesn't it? Anyway, Jim Parker and Fane Edwards got together and this is kind of a confusing time. Their association lasted from about 1984 to 1987, 88. Uh, I believe Jim, who was a man of means, and during this same time period actually owned case knives for a while before they went into bankruptcy. The bankruptcy, not his fault, by the way. Uh, but he had designs of making knives and actually building a state-of-the-art and fairly large factory in Alabama, in Jacksonville. I'm going to wipe down my bolster so you guys don't have to look at my fingerprints. You know, the, the stories about that time kind of vary. Some people think that Jim wanted to move all of Case's manufacturing from Pennsylvania to Alabama. Their factory was getting pretty outdated, and he, as he usually did, he had pretty big ideas about a new state-of-the-art large knife factory in Alabama. Uh, Case production never moved there. The company didn't make it. Uh, to get there in its current form of the 80s during the Jim Parker period. It went bankrupt and uh, was bought out of receivership and today thrives after having been, having been repurchased out of bankruptcy um, by a group of investors. But Jim Edwards and Fane Parker did make knives in uh, Jacksonville, Alabama in a plant now operated as Bear and Son Cutlery. It was Bear MGC for a while. Um, and they're still making knives with uh, Alabama Damascus at Bear and Son Cutlery. But this knife is a Parker Edwards and it's kind of special because they only made them for four or five years. And they made it with Fane Edwards' steel and with Jim Parker's designs. And Jim, uh, he was a knife aficionado and he became interested in knife design and knife making, uh, watching his stepson do it, I believe. And uh, uh, as I said, Jim was a man of means and he used those means to really uh, do a lot for the knife industry. Not only did he you know, pour a lot of his own money into saving case, uh, he spread a lot of money around in the knife world helping people who had skills uh, take a shot at the business of making knives. And not a bad eye for knife design Jim had, I think. And this is one of those Parker Edwards blades. Get a look at this tang stamp. You can probably see it better than I can with my old eyes. Let's see nothing on the back side of that one. Take a look at the spay blade. That of course was the clip blade. No tang stamp on the spay blade. And yes, this is a two-bladed trapper. We got a three and one eighth inch clip point blade, nice and lean, almost uh, Texas toothpickish. Uh, it has a lot, a pretty similar profile to a clip blade in a case. These are all these are full flat ground, and they're not super thin behind the edge. There's enough beef there for them to be durable. Um, just a tiny sharpening notch and a little bit of recurve. Nice long slender clip. Both both blades are nail necked. The clip uh, sort of back near the base and the spay blade out here so you can get to it. And the spay blade is three and a quarter inches long. Does this remind you of anything, guys? Guys who have been watching my channel. <laughs> kind of reminds me of one with this really long run of dead straight blade and then a sharp up sweep with this Interest, you know, you might call that a modified reverse tanto point. Hmm. You know, if it had a bit of a swedge up here, it might look a lot like a Benchmade 940.
<laughs> Wonder where they got that idea, huh? The spay blade, though, uh, is a classic in, a, in the trapper pattern. And, of course, as the name implies, with its sort of blunt point and sharp upsweep, um, you know, good for uh, skinning, the spay blade was, yes, designed to castrate farm animals like cattle uh, without puncturing other things in, in proximity like bladders and stuff. But it's a pretty neat all-purpose blade, good working utility blade for a knife like this because it retains a lot of thickness out toward the tip. Not one that you're going to snap the tip off of uh, if you use it for prying. Just a really, really useful pattern. Let's you know look at the construction of this knife. And by the way, handles four and an eighth inches, so it's pretty efficient. You know, the longer of the two blades is three and a quarter, and the handle is less than an inch longer than the longest blade. So, and by the way, you know we don't really think about this with older knives, but I thought I would weigh it before we did this video. And uh, you got two blades over six inches of cutting steel, and it weighs in at four point seven ounces. Not bad for something with a brass frame, nickel silver bolsters, and a big beefy front bolster. Stag handles, two big old back springs. Pretty size and weight efficient, I would say, for an old school blade. Look how thick those stag slabs are. Not exactly book matched on this knife, but they're at least fairly symmetrical, as you can see. And... Uh, Knife feels really, really good in the hand. Those stag scales are very hand filling. Check out the snap on these back springs. And yet, you know, this knife is what it's at least it's at least 25 years old. It was sort of a new old stock, new in box knife when I bought it five or six years after Parker Edwards was no longer. And you know, I, I won't. Uh, not gonna kid you guys it's not a knife I've carried a lot certainly not a daily carry knife it's kind of a oh you know once in a while when I feel like it knife I like to <clears throat> like to carry it like I did today but generally it's just kind of a collection piece and what a handsome one it is but you know it's really held up well over the years let's look at the construction just sort of Take a slow roll over this knife and you guys tell me what you see. I believe the back spacers and back springs are uh, stainless steel. But, you know, if you look at the, the fit and finish of this knife, uh, I'm as big a case knives fan as anybody. But especially the joints between bolsters and stag scales. Look at that. This knife is finished better than a case. Hate to say it, but it's kind of true. I really kind of love this old knife. Um, I think I paid... Oh... I think I paid $55, maybe $60 for this at the Gun and Knife Show. And I've done a little pricing research before I made this video just to give you an idea. Um, I found some uh, Parker Edwards trappers, some single-bladed knives um, with clip points. found some two-bladed trappers that weren't Damascus, which I think is a little odd for Parker Edwards. Some with bone handles. Um, the closest knives that I could find listed anywhere were a pair of single-bladed Damascus Stag small front bolster trappers. And uh, oh, the seller wanted $129 and $139 for those. Uh, so, you know, I paid $55 or $60 for this knife. I've kept it in really, really good condition. And I, I figure it's worth, you know, somewhere between $125 and $150 today. I didn't buy it to be an investment. I bought it was because it was a really, really nice, well-made traditional knife with Damascus blades. I'm kind of sucker for. I'm kind of a sucker for them, by the way. I just love the 
the look of those etched layers. And you know, they don't do bad at taking an edge. Uh, hey, here's another one of those before I had an edge pro jobs. These blades are both hand sharpened, freehand sharpened and stropped by me. Oh, it was cutting earlier, ain't doggone it. Oh, there we go. Let's try the spay blade. Oh, there we go. I got some snags in that clip blade, but... The spay blade seems to work pretty well. Hmm. You get the idea. Take a look at the polish on that edge. And that's, you know, just from... Uh, an ultra fine stone and a strop. It's got nice tooth to it, and that's kind of what uh, the claim to fame is with Damascus steel. As it wears, it develops tooth. <clears throat> Isn't that pretty? This video will probably get about, what, 50 or 60 views in the next two years. <laughs> you know, I know about two guys who will appreciate this. Uh, Campfire Talk will probably watch this beginning to end. and uh, I got a feeling Randy from Solo's Knife Reviews might stumble upon this and watch it. He'll appreciate this old blade. Just thought you guys, all three of you, <laughs> might like to see it before I put it away this evening. And rest in peace, Mr. Parker. And thank you for your contributions to the knife industry. And grace and peace to you, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp. <laughs>